good morning. It is day 12, I think. Uh, we're gonna go for a nice walk today. We're gonna go to Paradise Cafe, 18 miles away, and maybe get a hotel into um, Idlewild for one night. Just fly. That wasn't my plan, but I desperately need a shower. So uh, let's see how the day goes. I'm all out of water. I'm on my way to find some more. Normally I can carry four liters. I have a liter every two miles. I know after this water source is another 10 to another water source, so I could probably, I'll fill up with three liters. I tend to be more thirstier in the morning. Well, that's the leg burner. Oh my gosh. Well, I got water. Now I'm back on the trail. Mission complete. I'll stop in an hour, have breakfast. <sighs> Holy shit. Today is April 9th. <sighs> Today <clears throat> I'm gonna be thinking about my mom all day. It would have been her birthday today. She died, oh gosh, almost nine years ago now. <clears throat> so, happy birthday, mom. That. You know what that is? It's a back scratcher. Yep. Yeah, okay, here's a bit of the story time. My, because it's my mom's birthday, we'll start with her. She uh, got married when she was fairly young. I believe she was 18 to my dad. And they had my sister. Beautiful. And perfectly healthy, normal baby girl. Three and a half years later, I came in the picture. And um, I think about my mom and, you know, the surprise <laughs> that she got when I came out and she saw me for the first time. In fact, they didn't put her, put me right on her belly right away. They kind of whisked me away to check on me and whatnot, so she knew something was wrong. <sighs> and I, I really don't know her thoughts and feelings too much. She did write about it in a journal, um, but it was um, a letter to me, so I'm sure she spared me some details. But, and I was born in 1980, so, you know, she wasn't able to detect on ultrasound that there was something amiss with her baby to prepare ahead of time. There was no internet or Facebook group that she can get support from. She was just relying on the doctors and professionals to help her with her baby. And she had no idea what cleft lip and palate was. I think about that a lot because I have two babies, not babies anymore, but very healthy, t 
teenagers and um, when I was pregnant with them, I was really worried that I would have passed the gene on to them. I was worried that they would have hearing impairment, something. So, uh, I don't know why I'm talking and walking at the same time. All you're hearing me do is huff and puff. Okay, story time shall resume. There's some water at mile marker 139.5 in this concrete cistern. It's been good so far, some cloud cover today. Okay, so my mom, 23 with a newborn and a three-year-old. And her second child is cleft lip and palate. <laughs> she had her hands full. Um, my first surgery was when I was three months. So she would have had to deal with trying to feed me and nourish me and doctor's appointments and um, as well as uh, look after my sister. So that woman is a strong woman. She was a caretaker all her life. Um, she uh, looked after She looked after me, she looked after her sister, my sister, she uh, looked after her mom when she was sick, she looked after her dad, she looked after her, um, her, her second husband who was also ill, <sighs> he was an addict, and um, she did it. I don't think you ever really give your parents credit for who they are until they're gone. <sighs> I'm not really an emotional person. This is harder than I thought it would be. first surgery was at three months old and then that was just to repair the lip close it and then when I was a year old they had to repair my palate which is the hole in the roof of my mouth um, I don't really know how she fed me I never asked um, I imagine a lot of tube feeding it's no wonder I was so skinny when I was growing up uh, yeah, that, that was the start. I couldn't imagine that for myself. Having a toddler and a newborn. I guess you just do what you gotta do. And she was lucky. Because... We lived in Canada, and the help was right there for her. Um, I think about all the people for this fundraiser, Operation Smile. And a lot of these kids aren't so lucky right away. They have to deal with the shame and they don't fit in. Um, and 
they're otherwise healthy human beings. You already look different when you have a scar, <laughs> but when you have an opening in the roof of your mouth and an opening in your lip, that can be frightening for other kids too. So, uh, you know, it's not easy for other people to understand and to accept them. So, I'm happy to say I my goal was to raise $5,000 and I have raised $5,075. Thank you. Some people like a cottage by the ocean or by a lake. Others like it in the desert. She has a water tank that she fills up by hand. This is her property. She has allowed us hikers to sit and enjoy. She's got some papers and books and water report. There's Walt Whitman, John Muir, Henry David. Two o'clock, four more miles, two more hours. I um, met a lady named Radio at Mary's Place, and I think her and I will um, get a room together. So we will meet up. She just passed me, so we'll meet up at Paradise Cafe and decide what to do. It's moment by moment out here. It's like whatever you can get. I just need a shower and clean clothes. That's just the top of my list. I'm good for food. I'm good for water. Um, I know I am dehydrated today. I only been to the bathroom twice all day today, which is really unusual for me. So, and I don't know how I could be like, I'm drinking seven liters a day. I'm drinking plenty, um, but I think my body is just just starting to get tired it needs a break so it's coming just get me through four more miles body we're almost there first day at 70 degrees and last day at 79 degrees in the valley and ice cream. Is there a blender there? Okay, I don't see a blender, but there is like a stove, which is the opposite of the blender. Uh, the dirt is real. This is just for my pants. All of this, I did three washes. I was desperate for a shower and to get clean. This is why. 